Well, things just seem to go from bad to worse for Malcolm Turnbull, the Prime Minister of Australia. He had uh, a fairly ordinary week, to say the least. Um, first off, uh, started off with a yet another opinion poll that showed there was a 3% gap between uh, the Liberal Party of Australia and the Australian Labor Party, which is uh, pretty well run running steadily. And there's some, um, uh, where are the polls are actually showing a, a larger gap. It did say that uh, his popularity for some inexplicable reason had actually gone up a little bit compared to Shorten's. But Bill Shorten's so on the nose, I don't think there's anything to particularly rejoice about that. Um, slightly higher in, in uh, preferred Prime Minister, but again, it could be just a blip. I wouldn't be hanging on that. The basic important figure is that the Liberals are in a trench and uh, they are three percentage points below uh, Labor and they have been for months on end and it doesn't look like uh, Malcolm Turnbull's going to be able to dig them out of that trench. As a matter of fact, as I said, things just seem to be getting worse for him. Uh, we had the revelation of the uh, of the transcripts from the uh, the embarrassing phone conversation between uh, our Prime Minister and uh, Donald Trump, and um, what was revealed there was that uh, that Malcolm Turnbull any, was basically Trump anything he wanted. He was just trying to to get to 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 earn his favour. The deal that Obama did, well, you know, it's just, it's a very rubbery figure and, and we can ignore this 2,000 uh, refugee figure. It's just rubbish. It was just pathetic. The guy really has no negotiating skills whatsoever. Trump was still pissed off with him anyway, so he didn't achieve anything. Trump doesn't respect the guy. He obviously thinks he's a total turkey, which I think Trump is very, very uh, perceptive in that because, um, in my opinion, you know, Turnbull is pretty well one of our worst prime ministers ever. And I didn't, like I said before, I didn't think that was possible after the um, the Rudd-Gillard years that we would actually be able to have another prime minister of such a low base. Now, on top of that, he uh, adds insult to injury by um, by then trying to tackle the escalation in energy costs that everybody's feeling with their electricity bills going through the roof. At the moment, South Australia, by the way, is the most expensive place on earth for electricity. So good on you, Mr. Weatherall, the Premier. You've done really well there, haven't you? Uh, you're basically uh, destroying the economic viability of your state. And now he's trying to uh, have band-aids to fix it. Uh, running, running to Elon Musk in the U.S. to basically provide uh, battery power as a as a backup, and he's going to be looking at some other Band-Aid projects with some small gas uh, uh, temporary uh, power units as well. It's it's obviously going to cost a packet to provide this electricity, so it's not going to solve the problem. What you need is cheap base load energy. Now, there are only several ways you can do that right now. One is hydro, if you've got the, uh, the, the water available to produce the hydro. We've got a bit in Australia, but not enough for our total needs. The other obvious one is coal fire power. And it is cleaner now than it used to be if you get the modern plants. We've got to keep that in mind. And that is undoubtedly the cheapest uh, form of electricity at this stage. And then you actually have the nuclear option. Even nuclear fission is actually more efficient than it used to be and is a viable option. And we do have a crap load of uranium in this country. Uh, we have a crap load of coal. We have a crap load of uranium. Yet in South Australia, they're paying the highest amount of electric for electricity in the world. What is going on? This is green madness, and it is destroying our industrial base. The future of this country is being put in jeopardy. And what is uh, Malcolm Turnbull's great solution to this? He says he'll have a chat to the power companies and get them to tell the consumers when they can get a better deal on their power and, and what the best uh, tariff is to be, it, they'll be on. As if that's going to solve anything. It is just a bullshit PR exercise by a PM who just hasn't got the bottle to make the hard decisions. 
He is a running joke and he is really destroying this country and we desperately need leadership right now. We need someone like a Mark Latham who actually says it like it is. In Malcolm Turnbull's electorate and was, was greeted with a standing ovation. And this is quite extraordinary. This is the guy who was, who was potentially going to be a Labor Prime Minister being lauded by blue ribbon Liberal mem Party members in Malcolm Turnbull's own seat. Uh, the world is a strange place at the moment. And if Malcolm Turnbull doesn't see this as a sign that there are real problems in his administration, he is blind. I think he is. I don't think he's got a clue. He's the man who tries all these PR stunts to, to uh, garner uh, popularity, like saying he, tra he travels on public transport, always catches trams in Melbourne. Bullshit. He also says he's, he's a, uh, a Swans fan, but he doesn't know anything about when they're playing. He has no idea. He just says all this stuff to garner public support and popularity. You know, from what I can see, it's just a big smokescreen. So, um, you know, that's the way it looks to me, Malcolm. Prove me wrong, but I tell you what, I think you're a man with very little substance. And I cannot wait until someone in the Liberal Party has the balls to challenge you. Unfortunately, there's not many people in the Liberal Party with balls these days. They are a gomeless, weak, gutted, um, snowflake group of, of MPs. I really have very little time for them. And my local one up in, in Cairns here is another example of it. I'm not, not too impressed with him, but I think uh, he will basically be trounced by one nation when, when the election's held. Uh, that's just my personal prediction, because up in North Queensland, um, they're garnering quite a few votes. But seriously, this has not been a good week for um, uh, Malcolm Turnbull. And as you'll see uh, further on in this particular video, he wasn't exactly, he's not exactly getting much love from business leaders in this country. Why would he? He attacks the banks. OK, they've got their issues for sure. ComBank has got to, uh, there's a few executives who, who need to, uh, to be seen the door. There's no doubt about that with that money laundering. However, they're very important to our economy institutions like the Commonwealth Bank. We need good banking to actually allow industry to grow and commerce to grow. So you can't fiddle with that particular seg sector of the economy and get away with it. You need to, we need to have confidence and if we are getting none right now from the uh, government. People don't know where they're coming from. Uh, they, they are desperately looking for certainty. The reason that the American stock market is doing so well compared to the Australian stock market is probably primarily due to the confidence that's being um, exhibited over in the US now with Trump having some sort of vision, which is totally lacking with Turnbull. Uh, Malcolm Turnbull um, had an executive uh, dinner with some of the top executives in Australia on Monday night, and it was quite illuminating what took place. Malcolm Turnbull expected these people, like the, uh, the head of the uh, Commonwealth Bank, to grovel at his feet and be, be ha more than happy to donate to the Liberal Party for the next election. And of course, the response he got was less than enthusiastic. As a matter of fact, there was talk of some of these executives just walking out of the dinner.